what to pack and how to pack for a backpacking trip. I'm going to be giving you details on what I pack for backpacking trips. Uh, my gear does change depending on weather and location, but for the most part, this is the stuff that I take on a backpacking trip. The list that I have right there will be in the description area, so let's go through it. All right. The first stuff on the list is labeled gear that you absolutely need. Uh, this is stuff that you absolutely need for backpacking trips, uh, assuming that you don't want to build your own shelter and you don't want to sleep in the dirt. These are just the essentials, okay? The first thing that is on the list is your wilderness pass. Your wilderness pass is a little piece of paper that's a permit to allow you to backpack in the area that you're choosing. You can pick up this wilderness permit at ranger stations. Um, you could pick it up the day before the start date of your trip or the day of your backpacking trip. Um, you can also get it before online. Uh, it costs five dollars or something like that online, but if you just go to the ranger station, it's free. It is beneficial for you to get it beforehand online because it, there's only a certain number of permits that they give for a certain area. So definitely get your wilderness pass. Number two is you need your multi-day backpack. So this is my bag that I use. It's a decent bag. Um, this is a High Sierra 45 liter bag. Um, there's other bags that are bigger, 65, 70 something. You know, I like the 45 because I don't like to take a whole lot of gear. The goal of packing for backpacking trips is the lighter and smaller for the most part, the better. Um, you want things light, you want things small. So I get the 45 liter. I like this one in particular because it has this bottom pocket where I put my bear canister, which is by law you have to take a bear canister um, in certain areas that you backpack. Um, you have to check the laws of the national park that you're going to be at or wherever you're going to be at to see what the requirements are. Some allow bear sacks, um, but I go to Yosemite a lot. In the high Sierras, they you have to have a bear canister, and they fit really nicely down here in this big pocket on the bottom of the bag. Um, this bag also has a um, a rain fly that it comes with, which is stored here at the bottom. You just have to open this Velcro up, and it has pouches on the top lid here on the outside and on the inside. This is on the inside is where I like to put my med kit. Um, yeah, but it's a decent bag. Again, that's a High Sierra 45 liter. Um, I guess it's called a Hawk. I guess that's the, um, the uh, model or whatever. Um, so that's my multi-day pack. Uh, of course, the next thing that you need is your tent. Um, this is a one-man tent, super small and compact. Make sure that your tent, um, you know, it depends. If you are going with another person and you want to share the gear and you guys want to share the tent, then um, you can get a two-man tent, which is obviously going to be bigger than the one-man tent. Um, so, yeah, just don't forget your poles, your poles and your stakes um, that come with the tent, all right? Uh, so here's a one-man tent, or you can get a two-man tent and share the carrying load um, with whoever you're gonna go with. Next thing you need is definitely your sleeping bag. Uh, this sleeping bag is the Extreme Pack by High Peak. I bought this online like 10 years ago. I don't even know if they sell this anymore. Um, it's, it's rated at zero degrees. It's so old that it's definitely not zero degrees anymore. Um, but, uh, you definitely need a bag that is going to be appropriate for the weather that you're going to be in. So if you know you're going to be sleeping in 20 degree weather, then make sure your bag says at least 20 degrees um, when you buy it. But again, it's small, compact, not that heavy, and it's rated at zero degrees. Um, get at least, I would say, a 20 degree bag um, when you go on trips. It just depends on where you're going and how cold it's going to be. Next thing that you need is a sleeping mat. This here 
actually cost me quite a bit of money. This is the Big Agnes Insulated Q-Core SL. I don't know if that means small or what, but uh, yeah, th these are great. Big Agnes makes awesome, awesome gear. Um, this one is insulated. It's important to get an insulated uh, sleeping mat because your heat won't get lost um, while you sleep. Um, what happens is if you have, I used to have one of these, just a regular Thermarest, thin, super big compared to this one. Um, but this, I can totally feel the cold coming up the ground through the sleeping mat onto my body and it's not comfortable. Um, if they're insulated, you don't feel that as much. Actually, I don't feel it at all on this one. I don't feel the cold ground at all with this insulated sleeping mat. Um, you know, it's pretty cool. All you do is some self-inflate. Uh, this this one kind of self-inflates. This one I have to blow into it to fill it up. But definitely need that. A good night's rest will give you tons of energy the next day. Um, next thing that you need is a water bladder. Um, you can get these anywhere. This here is a Camelback water bottle. Um, I mean water bladder. Uh, this I stick it in my bag and stick the spout out of the bag so that it's sitting over my shoulder like this and I can just be drinking while, while hiking. Um, I have a little cover on it so that you know, it just doesn't, my, my spout doesn't get all dirty and nasty. Um, so you, what you also need besides your water bladder is a water filter or a water pump. I used to have this, the Katadin, I think that's how you pronounce it, water pump filter thing. It was bulky and, but it, I mean, it does a great job and it pumps super quick. But it's a little bulky and um, a little heavy, not really. Um, it's a great piece of gear, but to be honest, it's a lot lighter and smaller if you just get one of these. These right here are the Sawyer's uh, water filter. Um, and what I do, see the difference of size here? What I do is I actually attach it to my Camelback. So... I'll show you here. Here's my Camelback. Here's the uh, hose that comes out of it. And what I did was I cut it. So I took this off. Little spout. Um, I cut it here with my pocket knife. And then what I do is here's the flow arrow, right? So I just stick it here on the hose. And I just literally, I'll go to a lake and I'll fill this whole thing up. And then obviously the water is going to go through the tube and then it goes through the filter, right? It comes out of the filter into this piece of tube that I cut off. Stick that on there and then onto the spout and into my mouth. So then it just sits on there the whole time. And I just fill this up with dirty water. And as I suck right here through the spout, it's filtering through this, through this filter. So this is a Sawyer filter. It's super lightweight, super small. Uh, you do have to clean it once in a while, but it, it's not a big deal at all. And the instructions come with the packaging. So very important to take one of those. If you don't have one of these or you don't want to spend money on one of these, you definitely still need a filter. Um, and you could just take two water bottles. Um, you know, do that instead. But it's just very convenient to be able to drink water, water through a spout while you're hiking. Um, I do, regardless if I have a Camelback or not, I always want an extra water bottle. Um, what I do is I just take, this actually comes with a Sawyer water filter. Um, it's just a little bag that you can use to fill up with dirty water and use it as a filter. Um, what I do is I take this as just in case my camelback breaks, I can fill this up with extra water um, or just with water because uh, it's you have to have like an extra water bottle or something to put water in in case your camelback 
breaks. You need an extra water bottle, anything will do. A little bag, something to carry water in in case your Camelback breaks. All right, so we got that. Um, the next thing that you need is a bear canister. So there's different bear canisters. The one that I take is the uh, Solo one. Um, it's about this size, it's half of the normal size one, which is this one here. Um, this is the one that I used to carry, but I don't need this much space when it's just me. Um, if I'm sharing food with somebody, like if I'm going with with another person, then I could, uh, you know, then we share the bear canister. Um, that's okay if you're sharing with somebody, but if you're just gonna carry your own food, uh, get one of these. Um, it's half the size and half the weight. Um, so yeah, right now what I have in here is trail mix, which is to me, it's my best friend on a backpacking trip. It fills you up and it's not that heavy. Um, it's just great to have trail mix. So you have to have a bear canister by law um, in the high Sierras, Yosemite, uh, Bishop area, you have to have a bear canister. Um, it's not, that's not the case, I believe in Yellowstone, um, in different areas, but you just have to check the laws um, for the area that you're going to. But here's your bear canister. This is where you're gonna stick your um, food. Um, we'll go over food later. And just at night, you need to store all your um, items that smell, you that have any kind of perfume, any kind of odor, you need to stick them in here at night because uh, bears can smell from miles away all the stuff that you're bringing. All right, so that's your bear canister. Uh, the next thing is I have here thermo pants and shirt. Um, I think this is super important to take thermos. Um, it's just a good base layer to have when it's just a little, when it's cold outside. Um, these here were super expensive, but I've used them for years and they're great. Um, it's by, it's called the Icebreaker, um, and it's Merino, uh, the maker of it, who was it? Uh, it's just called an Icebreaker, and it's, uh, yeah, so it's, you can get these at icebreaker.com, and it's 100% New Zealand Merino, which if I remember correctly is, uh, goat fur, or goat hair, whatever it is, um, so these are super warm. Um, these are the pants here, and then I have the uh, the uh, shirt here. So just get yourself a nice pair of thermos. Um, yeah, and you're not supposed to, if you get a nice pair of thermos, you're not supposed to put them in the dryer. You can put in the washer, but you can't put them in the dryer. All right, so there's that. Um, next on the list, we have um, a lightweight rain jacket. You want a windbreaker uh, rain jacket. Very, It's waterproof, but it's still breathable. This is um, by Sierra Designs. I got it a long time ago at a sports chalet or something like that. Um, yeah, it's you, you need something to protect you from rain. You have to have this. You always carry this, and just from wind. You want a windbreaker, a waterproof windbreaker that's really compact. This just goes in the pouch, and then when I need it, I take it out. So, yeah, uh, again, a windbreaker, waterproof windbreaker, very important for you to take this. Um, then you need a, uh, you need your backpacker's food. So let's go over the food a little bit, which will go in your uh, bear canister. Um, what I generally like to do, and everybody's different, but this is what I do, um, for, Breakfast, I'll have a couple granola bars and some trail mix, basically. I don't like to cook in the morning. Um, if you wanna take oatmeal, uh, that's super lightweight, um, you know, but you have to cook it. So I don't like to cook in the morning, so I just take granola bars and trail mix. That's what I eat in the morning. And I'll take a vitamin, actually, a multivitamin. Um, so uh, for lunch, I'll eat a protein bar, some kind of protein bar and some trail mix and maybe some dried fruit. Um, and you know, 
more trail mix and more trail mix as I'm walking. And then at night, I'll have a freeze-dried backpacker meal or most of the time I just have ramen. Um, you know, the top ramen, uh, that to me is great. Um, the reason why I like top ramen is because sometimes when I get the freeze-dried backpacker meals, it does interesting things to my stomach. Um, so I, if I get the top ramen, um, and I'll just like throw some beef jerky in there as I'm cooking it. Um, all you need is water and the top ramen, a little bit of the pouch. I don't actually take every single pouch. Um, I, you know, the salt pouch that they give you, um, I don't take all the salt pouch, salt, salt pouches that come with each ramen square. I just take one of those little salt pouches and I use it for every night. Um, but if you like, you like a lot of salt in your food, then you can take all the pouches. But, um, so that's what I eat at night. I just eat top ramen with the little salt pouches. If you want backpacker meals, you can get those at an REI. Um, yeah, and that's what I eat at night. Probably some more trail mix. Um, wheat thins are super light. That's great. Uh, dried fruit, dried vegetables. You can even get dried vegetables. They're disgusting, but you can. Um, uh, yeah, and a multi-day vitamin. That's usually what I take. Uh, and you just, really the way that you prepare it um, is make sure you get rid of all the wrappers and stuff. Um, you can stick it all in one big Ziploc bag. For example, all the ramen can go in one big Ziploc bag and you can get rid of all the wrappers. Take your little salt pouch. Um, and yeah, uh, and that's basically it. Um, so that's food. I think I got that covered pretty much. Um, and everybody's different. You want to take a little bit of hot sauce, you can take hot sauce, whatever you want. Um, next thing is a headlamp. This, you got to have a headlamp. Um, before I would walk around with a little flashlight and you're trying to set up your tent with one hand as you hold your flashlight or you try to stick your flashlight in your mouth and you can't like, you know, it's just a mess. So uh, I get a little headlamp, small, lightweight, oops, headlamp. This one here, I mean, they don't even sell this anymore. It's, uh, I'm not even sure what the brand is. P-E-T-Z-L. Petzl. Not sure of the brand. But a little headlamp. You need this. Um, this one has different options. It has a uh, normal white light. And then it has the red lights too. Uh, there you go. It has flashing for emergency purposes. Not like you'd ever use it. Well, maybe. You might. I don't know. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so this one's pretty cool. It also has a whistle on this one. Yeah, if you need it. I think my neighbors are pissed. Okay. Um, they can probably hear me. So, uh, yeah, you need a headlamp for sure. Get a headlamp. Um, next thing that you need is uh, your compass. Uh, you need a compass and a map. Obviously, these are bare necessities here. You get your map, a legit map, and your compass. What I got is just a little tiny cheap compass and it's already here on my backpack. I just attach it onto my shoulder strap here. Right there, if you can see it. There's my little compass. You just have a compass. Um, Really, I don't use GPS devices. I just have a compass and my map, and that's good enough for me. Um, you know, that's really all you need, I think. Um, so you get your compass, you have your map, and then you're good to go. And of course, if you're going with a bunch of people, you know, you could share a lot of stuff. So not everybody has to have a map, and not everybody has to have a compass. Um, but it is important for somebody in your group to have one. All right, so you compass a map. Um, you also definitely need a lighter in case you want to start a fire, um, or if you're gonna cook, you need a lighter. If your lighter breaks or something, I like to take an extra flint. So here, you just use your pocket knife and you can get a spark and start cooking or start a fire or whatever. So you need your flint, just, just in case. Um, okay, if you're gonna cook, 
you know, if you're planning on actually cooking at night or in the morning or whatever, um, you're going to need a small stove, fuel, and a small pot. So this is what I have. It's titanium by MSR. Um, it's a titanium pot. Uh, I love this one. I've used it for years, and it's lasted me for years. Um, they're a little expensive because they're titanium, but they're going to last you forever. Um, it has a little spout to pour here. You can see that. Um, it has little handles here. Uh, it has a little red plastic covering so you don't burn yourself when you touch it. It has also a little thing to make it stand up, like a little gap in here to make the little handle lid thing uh, stand up so that it's not lying down while it's cooking. Otherwise, the plastic will burn. So you can just leave it up like that, take it off when you're ready to eat. Um, so what I store inside here is my fuel. Uh, so this is what I use. They use, they have better gear. Um, you know, I don't know if it's better. It's just preference. I prefer my little stove um, with the fuel. So here's the fuel and here's my little stove. Oh, I forgot to show you. This is the stove by MSR, little stove by MSR. It comes in this little plastic container. And here's the stove. It's really tiny, lightweight, small. There are some that are smaller, more lightweight. The point is get yourself a small, lightweight stove. And with this one, you just have to screw it on here. Uh, then you turn this, the gas comes out, and you light it. And then you put your pot right on top. All right, and here's my half a fork. It broke, but I only need half of it anyway, so I just keep it this way. Um, but you need a little plastic lightweight fork. would be great. Um, or titanium fork. But make sure you have a fork or a spork. So yeah, if you're going to cook, you're going to need um, your little small pot and your little stove and your fuel for sure. I like to store my fuel inside the pot along with the fork and along with the lighter. And there you go. Alright. Um, so that's the bare necessities that you need. Next on the list is um, what you should wear. So, um, what you should wear, um, I suggest what I always wear is hiking zip-off pants. So, these are by North Face. They're great pants. They've lasted me years. The thing about it is like, the thing about backpacking is if you buy good gear, that's going to last you forever. Um, I can't, I don't even know how many years I've been using this, these pants, but um, they're zip-off pants, meaning that they turn into shorts also. Um, these are bug proof and uh, they don't they don't hold moisture in so um, all you need is one pair of pants for the trip that's all you need and you'll be good you don't need to take more pants than that that's it one pair of pants a good pair of hiking pants do not take jeans do not take sweats get yourself a good pair of hiking pants um, the next thing that you want to wear is a good backpacker shirt um, again bug proof and uh, stink proof all of these are stink proof because of the material that they make it with I don't know exactly how they make it but you you well we probably stink to other people but um, no really the, it doesn't absorb the smell um, it's just getting a good backpackers shirt is a great idea um, because this is all you're going to be wearing for the entire trip so you don't want to be stinking um, yeah so you just want to take one shirt and you don't want it to stink because um, you don't need to take extra clothes you just take this and you this will last you I mean if you're going on a weekend this is all you really need if you're going for a week this is all you really need I would think um, and I have done, uh, the longest trip I think was that I've done is like five days. Um, and that's all I did. Or actually I did seven days. And this is all I used. Um, so this will be enough if you're going on even a seven day trip. I mean, if you're going on a month trip, 
Maybe you do want to take an extra shirt, an extra pair of pants, but I probably wouldn't anyway. All right. Uh, there's that. Then um, next thing you should be wearing is two pairs of socks. Um, socks are so important. I've tried many different ways of wearing socks, and I always got blisters. Finally, the way that I found out to not get blisters is having liner toe socks and then wool socks that go over these, okay? So these are liner dry toe socks. And the reason for this is because your feet obviously are gonna be sweating, and so you'll get blisters in between your toes, um, and these protect that from happening. Protect your feet, protect your toes from blisters. Then you put this over it, just regular wool socks, um, these are ankle high. You can get ones that are higher. It just depends, preference. Um, but these are wool socks that I put over that. I do take an extra pair of liner socks that I'll just stick in a Ziploc, in a big Ziploc bag, um, along with my thermo uh, to protect it, just in case your bag could actually fall in a river or something like that, or in a lake, I should say, um, and your stuff can get wet. So you want to put your thermo and your uh, any extra clothing or anything that you don't want to get wet, put it in Ziploc bags, big Ziploc bags or small Ziploc bags, whatever. So yeah, I do take an extra pair of uh, dry liner socks, the toe ones. Um, okay, then obviously underwear. These are the best. Exo Officio, it's called Exo Officio uh, underwear. I get the briefs. Again, the smaller, the lighter, the better. Um, they do have boxer briefs. They have, uh, yeah, they have boxer briefs, yeah. Um, these are great because this is all I wear the entire trip. Um, and they they don't stink up and they don't absorb moisture. Great backpackers underwear, okay? Um, and also, you can go swimming in them and they won't, they'll, they, they won't stay wet. They, they dry pretty quickly. Um, you definitely need some hiking shoes, hiking boots. These are waterproof uh, hiking boots by North Face, uh, Gore-Tex. Um, these are great boots. Just get yourself a, bit, a great pair of boots. You don't want them to be tight on you when you buy them. You want to leave a little bit of room in the shoe because you're gonna be wearing two pairs of socks. So, and the wool socks are a little thick. So ideal wear the socks that you're gonna be wearing when you go buy shoes. Um, you know, just to make sure that it, they feel right. Um, also, you should probably wear them a week before you go on your first trip because you you want to break in your shoes. Um, all right, that covers. Oh, also, what you will wear. What I like to wear. You can wear a um, hat or a bandana. I like wearing a bandana uh, just because it protects the sweat my eyes from the sweat. So it just kind of absorbs the sweat. Um, and I'm not always like wiping the sweat off my face. Um, you know, some people like it, some people don't. Some people don't wear anything on their head. Some people wear visors. Uh, just depends on what you like. Or beanies. Just I like bandanas. And if it gets cold, I wear a beanie. Um, so yeah, wear a bandana if you want. The, let's see here. Um, don't ever wear Vans backpacking. Don't do that. You can wear running shoes if you absolutely don't have the money to buy hiking shoes. You can buy running shoes um, or just use running shoes. Uh, a watch. You want a watch, you know, uh, in case you want to put an alarm for something or just so you know when about what time it is for sundown, stuff like that. Oh, have a watch. It's a good idea. Um, and in your pocket, you should have chapstick where's my chapstick the chapstick that I use um, has sunscreen on it so it's like SPF 23 um, whoops make sure you take some chapstick uh, it gets pretty dry sometimes um, so it's good to have a chapstick in your pocket um, let's see and your map goes in your pocket so this is what these are the things that I just showed you these are the things that I wear or put in my pocket I also have my phone in my pocket and I use it as a camera uh, for the most part. Sometimes I'll listen to music. Um, 
but that's basically it. None of your clothing, really, for the most part, except for your bandana, should be made of cotton. Nothing should be made of cotton. It, it absorbs uh, water and it, it, it's not good, especially if it starts getting cold. You're sweating, then it gets cold, and then you're really cold because everything still has water in it. So synthetics are great. Wool is great. Cotton, not so great. Bandana's the exception, I guess. Um, so other clothing that you need to pack is, of course, your thermal pants. You want to pack it and your extra pair of socks. Um, you want to put in a large Ziploc. Um, you also want to pack a down jacket or a fleece or both, depending on how cold it's going to be. So here's my down jacket. Um, down is goose down uh, feathers super lightweight and super warm kind of expensive though um, if you really don't want to spend the money on that I've gotten away with a lot of trips with just my thermo shirt and um, windbreaker um, you know especially in the summer uh, that's all I did was my thermo uh, shirt and windbreaker and I was fine even at night and I just if it got too cold I just use my sleeping bag um, You know if I was hanging out outside I just grab my sleeping bag, but man These are so nice and and super lightweight and super warm you put this on and immediately you're feeling warm So a nice down jacket would be great um, or You could get a fleece um, This is a Patagonia um, fleece they're also expensive but again they're gonna last you forever and um, just super warm I I would put this like under my down jacket if it's super super cold then I would, this is just an extra layer to use so if it gets super cold I'd be wearing my fleece then my shirt then this uh, wait did I say that right no if it gets super cold I'd first wear my thermo then on top of that my shirt then on top of that, the fleece. Then on top of that, my down jacket. Then on top of that, I'd wear my uh, waterproof uh, windbreaker. So you don't have to take all that. Just again, it depends on the weather. Um, for the most part, I will take um, my thermo. Always take my thermo. My shirt, obviously. Um, my down jacket and my windbreaker. And if it's really, really, really cold, and I know it's going to be really cold, then I'll also take my fleece. Um, other, th it, also, if it might rain, I suggest taking some rain pants. Um, I had a literally near-death experience. Um, we knew it was going to rain, but the rain turned into hail, and then it turned into snow. We got caught in a snowstorm up by Mount Whitney, um, in the middle of July. So we never thought we would, that would happen. So if there is even a slight chance that it might rain, I would take some rain pants. These go over your other hiking pants, but you wanna take some rain pants that you can just slip on um, because even if it says it's just gonna rain, it might hail and it might snow and you, you can get in a really precarious situation. So now, if it says that it might rain a little bit, I always take some rain pants with me. Um, and I also take gloves. If I know it's gonna rain, I, I take some lightweight gloves. These are great. These are called uh, Cirrus. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it's S-E-I-R-U-S. -E um, these gloves are, they're not bulky, so you can still like, put stuff together like your tent and stuff um, but they keep your hands warm and so they're you know water uh, water resistant and wind resistant so these work great um, and a beanie I take a beanie always for night it gets cold so that's the extra clothing that I take again except for your rain pants you want everything uh, in a ziploc in case you drop your bag in a or you fall in the lake or something you never know so that's the extra stuff 
Also, uh, next on the list, number three, is items that go in, in, in an easy to reach area of your backpack. So your wilderness pass needs to go, um, you know, the backpacks, multi-day backpacks come with like a belt thing that goes over uh, your um, waist. Um, it's just to, uh, so that the load is being carried by your hips. Um, and by the way, the way that you pack your bag, you want the weight to be centered um, on your back. Uh, you don't want like it to be top heavy or to all the way to be on the very bottom, but you want it to be the weight to be close to your torso. Um, anyway, so th some of these bags have like little pouches on the part that goes around your waist. Um, that's a great place to put your map or um, uh, your uh, wilderness pass or um, you know things that you need uh, th these items number three uh, on number three things that you need uh, probably to get out quickly um, so you want your wilderness pass in an easy to reach place um, an extra bandana is great for just injuries if you get cut all of a sudden or if your knee starts hurting it actually helps to wrap a bandana right here under your kneecap. Um, if you start getting uh, sore knees, um, you can just wrap the bandana under your kneecap. They sell knee braces for that too, but you can use your bandana for that. Uh, Lord knows I have many times. Um, then, um, what else, what else, what else? Easy to reach area. So an extra bandana, your pocket knife, uh, you definitely want a pocket knife. This is, I should have put that in bare necessities. That is a bare necessity. You need that. You absolutely need a, a pocket knife. Um, you, can, you can just stick that on your pants or stick it in your pocket or whatever. A whistle. Um, in the whistle is for emergency purposes. Um, you know, if you're stuck somewhere and you want somebody to rescue you, you use the, you use the whistle. I can whistle with my fingers, so I don't, really need a whistle but it's good to have one just in case um, uh, your phone obviously will go in your backpack you can get a GPS device um, you know some people like GPS map devices um, I don't use that I just use a compass and a map but I'm thinking of buying a GPS locator for emergency purposes because of my near-death experience being caught in a snow blizzard, I'm thinking of getting a GPS locator. Um, yeah, that you just press the button and they, they locate you and rescue you. But I'm um, not sure about that. Uh, of course, your compass is an easy and is should be at an easy to reach area. Your sunglasses, you need sunglasses. Um, uh, and then your headlamp should be an easy to reach area. Uh, what you should do is what I do is um, in a small Ziploc, I put my headlamp, I put a pen or a little marker to mark my map. For You know, sometimes you find interesting things or, or places where you can camp out um, on the trail and I like to mark that with a marker or a pen. Um, also, I carry a little extra flashlight a little tiny lightweight extra flashlight uh, just in case something happens to my headlamp um, and an extra little battery for my headlamp. Um, also in the Ziploc I would put uh, my ID and some money. I don't know, maybe on the trail you want to buy something from somebody. They have beef jerky and you really want some and you give them a couple bucks for it or whatever. Um, so I carry, uh, also my car key will go in here. Um, yeah, so that's basically what I put in a little Ziploc and I put it in my little pouch here on my uh, waist strap. So uh, that covers on number three items that go in an easy to reach area of your backpack. Uh, number four, personal care items. All right, personal care items. Um, personal care items. These should go in a Ziploc bag. Uh, what I have in here is uh, 
not only personal care items, but I have other gear that I need. Um, so uh, let's go through personal care items first. So number one, it says here, uh, bug repellent. That I actually carry it around in my front pocket also in an easy to reach area. Yeah, I'm gonna change the list. I'm gonna put this easy to reach area. This you would need for sure, especially if it's in the spring or in the summer. In winter, if there's snow around, there's not gonna be any mosquitoes, but in the spring or summer, um, you're gonna need DEET, or you can use natural bug repellent that has like lemon in it, um, but some kind of bug repellent, you need that to spray yourself with. Um, sunblock, definitely take a little bit of sunblock. Again, small, compact, um, biodegradable camper soap. Um, if you want to bathe in a river, wash your hands, wash your face, uh, take a little bit of soap. Um, a wash rag, uh, in case you want to bathe in a river, take a little wash rag. Um, small, fast drying towel. Literally, this is what I use to dry myself with. That small. Um, again, the smaller, the lighter, the better. It's super small. Um, it's made out of microfiber, um, so it's it, it absorbs all the water off your body, and then you just wring it out and you know dry yourself some more. But that's it. That's all I take to dry myself with. Um, and you want to take a um, deodorant. Now, deodorant, you don't have to take this whole thing. You could just get a little Ziploc bag. And um, this is the kind that's, uh, it's a gel. It's not um, white, the white bar, it's, it's gel. So what I do is I literally like click some gel out and stick it in a Ziploc and that's instead of taking this big old thing, I just take the little Ziploc bag, um, stick some of this in there, and then when I'm on the trail, I'll do this. I'll just show you right here. So here's a little Ziploc bag. So I put some of this in here, and then when I'm on the trail, I just turn it inside out like that, put some on the pits, and you're good. Some people don't take deodorant on the trail. If you want to take deodorant, put in a little Ziploc bag. It's a lot smaller, compact, and more lightweight. All right. Um, so that's deodorant. Um, also, you want to take... Um, I take some lotion um, just in case I get sunburned or something like that. Um, I take lotion. I don't use it often, but... I just take a little bit of lotion in case I get sunburned. Um, of course, you're supposed to be wearing sunblock, but things happen. Um, also, uh, I take uh, my toothbrush. I actually cut my toothbrush in half. Um, I have a little protector on it too. So here's my toothbrush, just to make it smaller, more lightweight. I know it's kind of extreme, but eh, it's smaller. So um, that's my toothbrush. I take a piece of floss in case I get something stuck in my teeth and it's bugging me. Take one piece of floss. Um, I take uh, my med kit. All right, so now we have to go through the med kit. There's This is my med kit here. I literally just put in a Ziploc bag. And I was an EMT before. Um, and these are the things that I, that I feel are just the bare essentials that you need. Um, you know, on a backpacking trip. So my med kit will definitely have uh, a bivy in it. Um, you can get a, uh, this is the SOL, Survivor, oh, Survivor Outdoors Longer. Um, oh, sorry, it says Survive Outdoors Longer, SOL. I guess, I guess that's the name of this certain bivy. It's an emergency blanket. Um, it's actually a bivy. A bivy means it's like a sleeping bag. So um, because of my near-death experience, I got a bivy instead of just a blanket. 
um, but these are awesome. They're like the metal looking um, blankets uh, for emergency purposes. So um, yeah, I got myself an emergency bivy, which is like an emergency sleeping bag um, that's like a metallic you know, fabric or whatever. Um, you wanna get one of these or just an emergency blanket will be fine. So definitely have one of these um, in your med kit, which in the, yeah, I'll make sure I put that on the list there. Or, yeah, I gotta edit that a little bit. Um, I take some ace wrap um, bandaging, um, just in case I twist an ankle or something, or somebody on the team or the group that I'm with uh, twists an ankle, I have ace bandage. Um, I have, uh, let me see if I'm missing anything. Uh, so then I have a roll of gauze here. Um, the roll of gauze, just in case somebody cuts themselves. I have mole skin. Mole skin is awesome. The way you do mole skin is you cut a piece larger than your blister. Mole skin is for blisters. Um, so let's say you have a blister the size of a dime. You want to cut out a piece that's larger than a dime. And then you make, you cut a hole that is the size of your blister. So you're not supposed to just stick the moleskin on top of your blister. You're supposed to stick, you're supposed to make a hole in the moleskin to leave room for your blister. So, to, you know, and then, so basically you're not putting more pressure on your blister. Um, it's kind of evening out the, the impact of uh, your walking by putting moleskin basically around your blister. So again, you know, you have to cut a piece out that is larger than your blister and then, uh, you know, out of the, you cut a piece out that's larger than your blister and then you cut a hole that's exactly the size of your blister and so you, you'll actually be able to see your blister through that hole um, and that's, that's how you use moleskin. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, I take band-aids, of course. Just a whole bunch of band-aids, different big bandages. Um, I have waterproof bandages, um, small band-aids, regular small band-aids. Um, yeah, small band-aids. So there's that. Um, you definitely want that. Some extra gauze. Gauze pads. Um, I have medical tape. These, this really comes in handy. Um, especially when you're fixing blisters or, you know, wrapping up cuts. Um, uh, here's here's an, a combined ABD pad. This um, is a very absorbent uh, pad um, in case there's heavy bleeding. Um, use one of these. Hydrogen peroxide, uh, oh, this is my hydrogen peroxide. So my hydrogen peroxide, I put it in an old Listerine bottle um, just because, you know, they screw on really tight and it doesn't come out. So hydrogen peroxide is so you can put on wounds and clean them up so they don't get infected. Um, so that's what I put on wounds to disinfect wounds or cuts, scrapes, whatever. Use hydrogen peroxide to disinfect. I have a little bit of rubbing alcohol too. The alcohol is to sterilize the tools that I use. For example, um, if I need to pop a blister, which you pop a blister um, when you're out backpacking, you wanna pop it um, and then disinfect it with the hydrogen peroxide and then disinfect the uh, scissors or whatever tools you use with the alcohol. Um, I also have little tweezers on here in case you get um, a splinter or something stuck in you. I have little, little tiny tweezers. Okay, and these are the scissors that I use. See how they have like round, so you don't poke anybody while you're trying to help them. The round tip there. So yeah, um, I also take neosporin, a little bit of neosporin. I just put it in this little plastic container. Um, I also take a. This is probably, I don't know. It's some people say you don't need this. Uh, really, it, what this is, it's a bite and sting kit. It's a snake bite kit. Um, it's just a little pump. It's supposed to suck venom out, 
if you get a snake bite kit. Some people say it's not worth to have one of these because really, I think it says you're you're actually like helping yourself by one minute. You know, like you're prolonging your life only a minute or two. But I say, I mean, that's a minute or two that you're helping yourself with. So I always take my snake bite kit unless it's like winter and I know there's not gonna be snakes out, but it comes with a little suction cup thing and I put little band-aids in there and uh, some sting relief stuff. So this is snake bite kit. Um, here's some little uh, sting, sting ease. Uh, this helps when you have a crazy mosquito bite that is itching like crazy. This helps with it. So that's my med kit. All right. Uh, next thing um, is okay. Uh, the bear canister. So we already talked about the bear canister. Uh, your canister will be full of the food that you will be taking on your trip. That should be enough for the amount of days that you're going. Um, and at night, uh, what you need to do is you need to put all your um, uh, your items that are non-odorless, anything that smells that has an odor, toothpaste, um, obviously food, uh, lotions, whatever it is, you have to put it at night when you go to bed in your bear canister, and your bear canister needs to be hidden um, in a bush or something away from your campsite. That's the rule. Um, you don't want to put it next to a cliff or next to a river because the bear could hit it into the cliff or, or into the river or down the cliff. Um, so you put it in a bush away from the campsite or away from where you're sleeping, um, hidden. Um, that's where all your non-odorless items go at night, including your food and trash. Which, by the way, you're supposed to be um, packing out your toilet paper that you use. You put it in a Ziploc bag and even that goes in your bear canister at night. The used toilet paper. I don't think I need to get more descriptive about that. Um, so yeah, uh, anything that is non-odorless needs to go in there at night. Um, deodorant definitely needs to go in there. Um, other gear that you need is, um, obviously we talked about having your tent your sleeping bag, your sleeping mat, your water bottle, uh, your water bladder. Um, you know, it's either a water bladder or two water bottles. Um, it says here a water bladder and extra water bottle or two large water bottles. Um, you want your water filter. Uh, I also take a plastic mirror. Um, they suggest this for reflecting. See, uh, if people are searching for you, you could use a mirror to uh, reflect the sun to them so that they can see you and find you. Um, so I, I take one of these plastic mirrors um, and also it helps, you know, in the morning, make sure you don't have a booger hanging out of your face or something like that. Um, so I take that. Uh, also a plastic extra rain poncho. Take one of these. Um, you know, my backpack actually comes with like a rain fly, a rain protector thing that you can put over your bag if it rains. Um, this, really I take it in case somebody else needs it. Um, but I don't think you need both. But you take a little extra little plastic rain poncho if you need to use it to protect your bag in case it rains. Unless your bag already comes with one. Um, sandals. Sandals are you got to take some sandals. Um, at the end of the day, you don't want to be wearing your boots anymore. And, you know, if you're going to bathe in the river or um, whatever you do, um, at night, you just want to take off your boots and you want to put sandals on. It, it's a, it, it, your feet will be happy. Your feet will thank you if you do this. Um, yeah, so take some sandals. Um, also, uh, a mosquito head net. I can't stress how important one of these are, okay? If you've ever been in a swarm of mosquitoes, uh, you know what hell is. Huh. 
it so I've gotten caught in swarms of mosquitoes before and I hated life because I didn't have one of these but this is just something that literally you put over your face and it just protects you from getting eaten alive by mosquitoes um, they also sell these for your entire body you know you can put they have they sell pants uh, mosquito net things um, but I just get the face one um, again it depends on when you're going if you're going the winter you don't need one of these but uh, spring summer I always take my mosquito head net uh, next is your obviously your small titanium pot your small stove we talked about that already your fuel for the stove make sure you have enough for the amount of nights that you'll be cooking or days um, your lighter your flint um, I always take a little cleaning rag too, um, you know, to wash your pot with, um, you know, clean stuff with. Uh, I always take a little cleaning rag. Um, uh, your spork or fork. Um, uh, a large Ziploc bag for, for trash. You just take an extra large Ziploc bag where you put all your trash, including your used toilet paper fun um, and then uh, let's see what else I got here then um, a strong rope with a clip so I literally went to REI and asked told them that I need rope um, I forgot how many yards I got um, I got a whole bunch I I can't I don't even uh, a hundred yards maybe I don't I don't know what I got but I got a whole bunch of rope um, it's strong rope I got it years ago um, probably need to buy new rope but uh, uh, this is just in case you get you know some people say this is overkill but I always take it just in case if you get stuck somewhere and you need to climb down somewhere or climb up somewhere or whatever you have just some rope um, that you can use as an emergency not only that but I've also used it to like hang out uh, wet clothes or whatever you know um, I use rope for that um, I also take an extra clip um, just in case in a situation where you get stuck somewhere you could use this um, and the rope to get out of gnarly situations um, some people say this is overkill but I always take it just in case um, a small amount of duct tape um, I also take a small amount of duct tape I just roll a little bit of duct tape um, and put it in you know with my uh, gear here in the Ziploc bag where all my personal care items go um, that's where the rope goes and all that stuff take some of this um, you know in case you get a hole in your bag or whatever duct tape always comes in handy um, your emergency bivy we already talked about that uh, let's see, extra shoelace. If you break your shoelace, life will suck. Um, you can cut some of your rope and use it as a shoelace, but I just take an extra shoelace, just in case. Um, uh, a lot of people recommend that, to take an extra shoelace. Um, your small extra flashlight, we already talked about that. Toilet paper. Um, so this is supposedly biodegradable toilet paper really what they tell you um, you know rangers will tell you that nothing that says biodegradable is actually biodegradable um, but supposedly this is biodegradable um, you're technically supposed to pack out your used toilet paper so you don't need biodegradable toilet paper I'm not either I'm not saying I'm not going to tell you what I do but uh Maybe I do pack up my toilet paper. Maybe I don't pack up my toilet paper. Maybe I bury it with this supposed biodegradable toilet paper. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. I put this in a little Ziploc along with some hand sanitizer for those pooping moments. And uh, when you poop, you got to dig a hole pretty deep. Um, you poop in the hole. And then you use the toilet paper and you cover it all up with dirt and you leave um, and you use a hand sanitizer I also have like a little moist toilet 
that I've never used before. Um, but maybe on the next trip I will. Uh, I never usually pack this, but on the next trip I'm thinking of taking it. Just, you know, you know wipe my hands, make them clean. Um, so there's that. Toilet paper, uh, hand sanitizer, oh, a fishing line. If you, I don't know, feel like fishing, um, I just take some fishing line with a little, with a couple hooks and small weights. Um, let me see if I can find it. And, um, oh, here it is. So I just put in a little plastic bag, uh, some fishing line. I wrap it around a piece of cardboard. Um, put the hooks in there, a little bit of weights. Also, I have needle and thread in here. I think it's in here. Needle and thread in case you rip something of your clothing or your bag and you want to sew it up. Uh, needle and thread is great. Um, so, yeah, take fishing line with hook, small weight, sewing needle and thread. And that's everything. It's 2 in the morning. Can't believe I got through this. Um, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. Again, for the most part, if it's smaller and lighter, it's better. Do not bring extra stuff. You don't need extra clothing except the, what I told you. Um, you'll be hating life if you have a heavy bag. Um, a toothpaste. I forgot about the toothpaste. When you take toothpaste, you can take a little tiny thing like this or just squeeze some toothpaste into a Ziploc bag. You know, whatever amount that, you, that you're going to need. Um... You don't need a whole big old tube of toothpaste. Um, prepare all your food beforehand. Don't take any unnecessary wrappers. Uh, put things in Ziploc bags. Um, oh, you can actually purchase this. Um, it's Ultra Thon insect repellent for clothing and gear. Uh, mosquitoes suck. So if you want to spray, buy this, it'd be great to protect yourself from mosquitoes. You can spray your bag with this. You can spray your clothing with it. Um, directions are in the back of how to use it. But this is great stuff. Um, let me see if there's anything else. I think that is it. Uh, make sure you take jumper cables, spare tire for your vehicle. Make sure your vehicle is great to go. You don't want to get stuck somewhere. Um, and that's it. And, of course, a lot of the stuff you can share. Just use common sense. Uh, okay, I think that's it. Have fun.